Fun fact, it's actually not tracking my mouth at all. It is just listening and trying to emulate the sounds. Oh, 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 oh. E -e 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 -e. You see the mouth? <laughs> this is my Oculus Rift S. When I bought this at the time, it was very, very appealing to me. It is self-tracking, so it doesn't need any captors around your place. And basically this comes in the box plus two controllers, that's it. The main reason I bought it was to burn some calories while I was at home, and that was before the pandemic. But I couldn't help but view it in a content creator mindset. I kept asking myself what were the possibilities with a virtual reality headset. Of course, I bought it as if it was a console, as if I could just boot up some games and then play and then put it down. But I soon realized that it was way way more than that first of all the technology is already so so impressive but the way that you can interact with stuff in a virtual world is so far beyond the experience that you would get with a console but before i say all of that something that i feel is very important for me to tell you is that there's a lot of myths 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 it's it's hard to pronounce that word myths there's a lot of false information that's going around because so many people believe in it and i used to believe in them i used to believe that vr was super expensive and basically unaffordable i used to think oh i need at least one thousand dollars to have the basic i mean if you're trying to buy the best of the best of any type of technology it's going to be unaffordable but this is not even the cheapest headset the cheapest headset doesn't even have wires the cheapest headset is about one third of flagship smartphones the oculus quest 2 which is the cheapest decent headset out there is actually cheaper than a console another thing that i heard was uh, virtual reality gives you motion sickness there's nothing you can do about it you're gonna have motion sickness no matter what so i studied i watched channels such as uh thrill sicker uh virtual reality oasis and i realized that i just needed to ease myself into it that i couldn't jump on day one and play games where i'm just running super fast and doing mirror's edge i had to ease myself into the comfort so play games that didn't require me to move that didn't have stuff flying at my face really fast and i did exactly that and i've never experienced motion sickness in virtual reality since i was also interested in virtual reality as a content creator i started wondering how would i record it because apparently it's split images you know there's a spot for each eye even though there is one single screen there when you're playing games the game that you're playing is actually projected on your screen on your normal pc screen in my case with this headset that is plugged into my pc so from there you can just have a game capture in obs studio or you can use shadow play if you want to so very easy you can select if you want to record left eye right eye or a combination of both but how would I record audio. Actually, there's a microphone integrated in the headset. I can point. You. Yeah, you. You, you, you. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> but this is where my knowledge basically stopped and I had to seek help. I found Adam Bombadi's channel on YouTube and it was such an eye-opening experience for me. I managed to learn so much about the possibilities of virtual reality when it comes to recording and creating content. That's where I learned about Live, which is a software that allows you to, to put yourself in the game via mixed reality. If it's not yourself through a webcam and a green screen, then it would be through an avatar, for example. But they also have have other tools for live streamers such as you know having your chat in the palm of your hand and stuff like that while you're in virtual reality i actually had the opportunity to interview adam bomb body and that was before she eventually became the official community manager for live congrats on that by the way so on top of telling you my experience with you know looking for all the options for content creators i will be showing you snippets of that interview that i did with adam bomb body but know that the full interview is going to be posted on my podcast channel that's right i have a podcast channel uh, there's no episodes out yet but you can go and subscribe to that channel check out the link in the description i'm super excited for this video but right before all that a message from our sponsor this portion of the video is sponsored by owned owned is your one-stop shop for customizing your live stream they have a wide variety of customizable products from your logo, your banner, your offline image, your animated overlays, your sub emotes, your loyalty points, subscriber badges, everything from start to finish. When checking out their complete packages, right here you will find the interactive showcase. So if you want to know what the donation alert within the pack would look like, just click on it. And there you go. Then you have all the options, animated overlay, webcam overlay, which look at that. They even considered people who use green screens. They also provide gaming mascots and an avatar maker. But I'll let you guys figure that out. All you have to do is go to own.gg slash gal level. That's O-W-N-3-D.gg slash gal level. An advanced Twitch streamer gets a VR headset for the first time. How easy would it be for that streamer to set up an, an avatar stream? Precisely.
actually really easy because you only, again, besides like assuming you know things about like broadcasting software, all you really mm. need, um, depending on what you want to do, is like one or two programs. And uh, I guess the first thing you'd have to worry about is getting an avatar, which there's a lot of already pre-made ones, uh, mm -hmm. but... There is a software called like Vroid. That's where people usually go to make their their first ones. And that's a really simple, easy to use program. Um, if you want to do like mixed reality stuff, which is where basically you're in the VR game. Like, I guess I should talk about mixed reality a little bit to, <laughs> to save confusion. So mixed yeah. reality is uh, kind of a way to try to showcase what VR looks like to people that are on a 2D flat screen, which can be hard to replicate that experience. So what it does is it puts you, you can either do this with a, a camera showing your actual self or with an avatar, um, but it puts you inside the game. So it's like you are the character in the game. And uh, this is where avatars really shine because one of the hard parts about if you're doing VR mixed reality is you kind of need more space. So then if you're going to do a camera, like how am I going to do the, the green screen gets a little bit more complicated because it's bigger and then the lighting setup, everything's just bigger. So if you have an avatar, you don't have to worry about it. You don't even need a webcam for it. It uses the like the headset tracking and your controllers uh, as hands, basically. But yeah, all you pretty much need is one program and that's live. And it's it's super easy to set up all the settings that they have. I guess the hardest part would just be deciding on what avatar you want, really. But the... The setup itself, uh, if you're doing avatars, is super, super easy. So when we're talking about recording your gameplay or even live streaming your gameplay, when you are playing a game in VR, you are bobbing your head and moving all around. So if you were to record straight from the view that you have, it might not actually be the best. If you're playing Beat Saber, for example, that requires a lot of movement, the camera, which is ultimately your face, is going to be very jittery. Inside of Beat Saber, you actually have the option to smoothen the camera. Smoothen? Is that a word? To make it smooth so that the app that is figuring on your computer screen is going to have a smoother version of you playing the game. So when you're recording, it's going to be super smooth. You can also mod the game in order to place a camera yourself. So you can get every camera angle as well as having a fixed camera. Now, if you want to take it a step further, you can actually have an avatar in there. You create an avatar, you import it, and then your avatar is doing the movements and you can record it with your custom camera that you place wherever you want. Camera could be moving. You could make the camera go like uh, move in 3D space. It doesn't matter because it's tracking you. I did mention that I bought my headset because I wanted to burn calories while staying inside. When I watched people play Beat Saber, it didn't look that difficult. It didn't look that intensive. But once I started playing it, first of all, uh, I have a Fitbit that would track my steps, my heart rate, and my calories burned. I can tell you right now, that playing Beat Saber for about 30 minutes to an hour is a full workout, pretty much. My max is 175, where I completed the song at 175. And uh, let me give you a glimpse of what that looks like. Now, there's another game that I play for this called Thrill of the Fight, and I always thought that I could fight. You know when you're sitting in front of your computer, you're watching those YouTube fight videos, and you're like, oh, I could take this guy, or you're, you're looking at other people, you're like, I could take this guy. No, just, just me? Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I don't think you can ever figure out how out of shape you are better than punching air for 10 minutes and then not be able to continue. <laughs> It's just amazing. Something else that I want to talk about when it comes to the possibilities of VR is that I thought this was a console. I thought I'm going to buy this headset. I'm going to play games. I'm going to finish playing games. I'm going to put it down. Turns out there are so many other things that you can do with a VR headset. I have a tiny monitor that I edit videos in. I put this headset on. I could have three giant monitors and edit my videos. I have a 50 inch TV. What if I wanted a 150 inch TV? All I have to do is put on the headset, sit back, relax, and I'm watching a movie on a 150 inch TV. During the pandemic, I missed hanging out with a friend. You know what we did? We went to a virtual theater and we watched the movie at the movies and there was fake popcorn and all of that. <laughs> the only thing that was missing was the smell. You wanna hang out at the bar and meet new people? There are apps for that. Even when I started playing, I realized another part of, of being in VR is the, the social aspect. I play Echo Arena 
and I find myself just hanging out in the lobby more than more than I actually play. Everyone is super good at the game, so I suck. I just hang out in the lobby and and make friends and have conversations. And I just I would do that for like four hours, just hanging out in the lobby of the game. And it's super fun for me. It's it the really best is. thing ever. I love it so and much. I mean, it's, it's so weird because when I think of like desktop social games i'm like that sounds boring but it's different in vr because it's kind of like you're you're actually there with yeah. people that are you know across the country uh you know other other parts of the world but they're like they're right there with you that's how it feels when you're in vr and it's so cool and to be able to kind of be in the same room it feels like with your friends Pretty much, that yeah you can't see especially now you know with all the coronavirus times like oh you can just hang out in virtual reality and you can you can watch a movie with them if you wanted to together you could play different dumb mini games like there's so much stuff you can do now and i didn't really care for the like the social aspect of a lot of these types of games on the desktop but i can definitely definitely appreciate it in vr it's, it's really cool what you can do now i'm not going to pretend that the experience is a one-to-one -one comparison before i had this headset i actually thought that it would be even more immersive i thought that i wouldn't be able to dif differentiate real life from vr basically that i would really really be in there and i couldn't see but the truth is you're still running a you know 3d software most of the time you can still see pixels but that being said, your brain is still very, very, very tricked. I play a game called Echo Arena, where you are in zero gravity. And from time to time, out of nowhere, I'm standing in the middle of my apartment. Out of nowhere, my brain would just disconnect my knees. <laughs> and my knees would just go bloop. And I would have to like catch myself up. I would lose balance for no reason because my brain starts thinking that we're really floating in zero G. <laughs> but I got to say that when we were in, in full lockdown here in France, we were in full, full lockdown. Couldn't go out pretty much at all unless you had like a signed paper or whatever, something like that. And it was still winter. So it was raining or snowing. It was like the weather was horrible and I needed some fresh air. I'm not going to lie. I would put on my headset and I would just hang out in like a forest or, <laughs> you know, in nature just to feel and, and it worked. It felt like I was, you know, I wasn't actually getting sunlight, but my brain was reacting really well to it. So it really helped me in that department too. Sometimes hanging out with your friends, you really feel that connection of they are here because they are here you can actually interact with them you can hear them and that little bit of happiness that you have when you just spend some time with your friends i had that so for a piece of gear that cost me less than a modern console it brought me way more than the typical you know gaming fun that i have all the things that it does to trick my brain has helped me become even more fascinated by the virtual world now, I didn't go too far into details when it comes to VTubers. The reason is you don't necessarily need a virtual reality headset in order to be a VTuber. The purpose of being a VTuber is to replace your image with one of a avatar. It can be a PNG avatar. PNG VTubers exist. It can be a dog, a cat, if you're using face rig. But most importantly, in the podcast, and I will be making a video about them, I would like to interview a full-time VTuber, someone who has never shown their real face on camera, someone who is full-time VTuber, basically. And uh, leave a like if you would like to see that. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast channel in order to know when the episodes come out. And share this video with a friend who's maybe thinking about getting a virtual reality headset or has been thinking about the whole VTuber thing. You may have noticed that I have a brand new chair. This is such a cool, fancy chair. I actually posted a video about it on my tech channel. In this video, I unbox it and I assemble it and I show some of the features. There will be a link to that video in the description as well as an affiliate link if you would like to get uh, this chair too. If you're a Twitch streamer and you would like to get some amazing overlays to make your channel look good go to gumroad.com slash get level a lot of them are free the rest is very affordable and this is the part where youtube will show you what they think you should watch next and at the bottom of it you will see my most recent video but i have to thank you for watching go out there make me proud get level out